Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Just Free coming at you with another video. Feel free to like, share, subscribe. Um, thank you for tuning in this evening or whenever, morning, noon, or night. Since I can't go live right now because I only have 200 some subscribers, but that's okay because you guys are my family, my YouTube family. Okay, so I want to give a shout out to Bugaboo Sue. Um, new subby and all my other subs, but um, particularly the new ones, Intelligent Thoughts. Shout out to you, sir or ma'am. How you doing? So today, um, I'm just going to um, play Sansare Oldie but Goodie, and I'll do some commentary, try to make it funny. You know how we do. Um, this is um. More comedy than anything. Not that I'm a comedian, but I just like to keep it light and fun. So, on that note, oh, let's see, I gotta turn off my Bluetooth so y'all can hear it. And here it go. Also, shout out to YouTuber Mona Simone. Oh, and shout out to um, Ebony Man K 2K. I'm using his um, content. Um, thanks a lot, bro. For her thorough work in this matter as well. I'm going to jump right into a recent video of Sansa Ray for a review. I chose this video to show new viewers an example of how delusional she is. I also caught something while listening. The statement she makes around the 16 minute mark is a bit peculiar, considering the matter at hand. Let's listen now and compare notes at the end for a review. Listen, listen, listen. I just finished doing a live stream about money and about living under 10K. And how living under 10K is um, you live in poverty, basically. So go check that out so you can get a better understanding, okay? You can check out my Money Talks playlist, my finance playlist, and it should be there. So I wanted to go over something about my son's father, my son's father's with an S, okay? <laughs> my son's father's with an S. Make sure you thumbs up the live stream. This is a members only live chat. So you cannot chat unless you are a member, okay? I'm gonna be doing all of my live streams like that. Again, I just finished a live stream, but that live stream was open. So if you were in that live stream, I appreciate you being there. This, this, I had to start another live stream to talk about this specifically. Okay, so if you have been watching my channel for a long time, you know the story of me and my son's father, Priest. Okay, and you also know of my son's father's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my son's godfather, Michael. All right, and Michael, after finding out that Priest and Sidonia was on. Tommy's channel, Tommy Soto Mayor, <laughs> Tommy Soto, Tommy Soto Mayor, the the man who hates all black women, or or sometimes or certain black women. Let's just put it like that. Tommy hates certain black women. Tommy goes on to, I mean, a uh, priest and Sedonia decide to go on to Tommy's channel. Right. This was about six months ago. Michael who is my son's godfather, saw this interview with Priest and Sidonia on Tommy's channel. And so Michael decided to do a small audio, and I posted the audio up onto this channel. You can go look at it. All of that stuff is still there. And inside of the video, the audio, I'm sorry, Michael was talking about how he's known me for a couple of years, and I'm not the type of woman that Reese tried to depict me to be on Tommy's channel. Now, here's the interesting thing. So, for, Michael has known me since I was pregnant with my son. Priest only stayed by this time, by the time Michael posted this. Keep that in mind. Michael's only known her since she was pregnant with Little Man. Okay audio about how he feels about priests because he never liked priests by the time this audio 
So he only. Uh, okay, go ahead. Video is posted, and by the time Priest and Sidonia have done this interview on Tommy's channel, Michael has known me for about two or three years. Okay. So Michael is saying all of. How the fuck he know you two or three years? When they did these interviews like two years ago, oh, I'm a, I'm gonna look that up. Hold on. Is these positive things about me in this audio? He's saying the way that priest is depicting me is not who I am, right? And it, that's very true because I think priest just wanted people to think I was a, a bad person so it could justify the negative shit that he had done. And one of the things that Michael had pointed out as far as priest went was that inside of this interview that him and Sidonia did, they really didn't talk about justice. Okay? Justice, our son. The priest did not talk about abandoning his son or what being a father or anything like that. The conversation was only to drag me and try to do pick me as something that I'm not. All right. And so this is what Michael ended up picking up on. Michael, my, my son, Godfather. And so, when I first met Michael, right, Michael used to send me pizza every Friday. Okay, I was pregnant when I, when I met Michael. He used to send me pizza every Friday. I used to call him the Pizza Berry. And he used to send me pizza because, you know, pizza is something that I craved when I was pregnant, so he used to just send it to me. And... He was always there for me financially. If I needed anything, Michael was there. Even after Justice was born, Michael was there for Justice financially. I don't care what Justice needed. I don't care how much money. I could have needed a thousand dollars. I could need five thousand dollars. Michael was gonna send it to me, okay? Because he wanted what was best for me and my son. He was so good to me. I don't. So a man that you not fucking. Gonna rent, gonna send you, just send you a thousand to five thousand dollars without giving up the cooch. And you only known him for roughly two years. I'm not going with your three. We'll say roughly two. And when I called him, I could have called him at two a.m. Michael would answer the phone. He was always there. Okay, I could reach out to him, text him, whatever him. He was always there, all the time. And so. Of course, me, I wasn't ready to be in a relationship, right? So, I find it interesting that you, <laughs> that you were willing and able to trust a man so soon after Priest did what he did to you, allegedly, although you weren't having sexual relationships with this man. Huh, interesting. But then again, nothing you do makes sense, child. Michael and I never. This all could be a lie anyway. Like at by the first, way. we're trying to be in a relationship. So somebody came into my comment section last night, and they put on the video of Michael talking about me positively to the world. Right? They put now again. Now, mind you, <laughs> Michael had to put out a video talking about her positively. Now, nobody else she done known for years at a time, some random man she allegedly done known for two, roughly, maybe three years, is the only person that she could find to put out a video that's in a positive light for her. Okay. In the video. I mean, he did, whoever he was, <laughs> some old crazy nut. <laughs> <laughs> that she that she bamboozled somehow in the, in the comment section that my <laughs> son's godfather Michael couldn't be trusted because Michael was in love with me and would say anything and my thing is <laughs> why is it so hard to believe someone that genuinely knows me and someone that trusts me and loves me versus my son's father who admitted that he didn't love me and was bad for me. Like, why would it be easier to trust my son's father over my son's godfather, who is someone that genuinely cares for me, who genuinely knows me and has known me long? 
because bitch she was fucking you you stayed with him hell you lied and said you was married to him bitch you said you was um yeah he had herpes and and uh, you went to the damn house swinging parties with him so bitch yeah he know you all right longer man my son's father i don't understand that with people i don't understand you guys when you can judge me so harshly as a person and anything something anytime someone says something positive about me as far as my my now is she asking us the the retract the detractors the people that give her all the heat why is she asking us shouldn't she be more concerned about the people that care about her i still just don't understand i would be so offended if i was following and supporting a youtuber that they would focus all their energy on detractors but okay son's father and i go that's difficult for people to believe but it's so much easier to believe the negative lies that are told about them, right it Why is, is that so easy to yes, believe? Yes, because you're a liar. So, they were saying Michael couldn't be trusted. You know, he loves her. He's going to say whatever, you know, she wants him to say. And no, Michael Dean really said more than what I thought he was going to say in this clip. If y'all haven't checked out this clip, you can go. It's still there. Uh, and of Michael, my son's godfather, talking about priests. Now, here's the fucked up part. All right. Michael. Like sometime before Christmas, right? I think it was like November, something like that. Michael started acting funny. All right, he started acting like weird. And I, I think it might have been before that he started acting like crazy. He started kind of, I couldn't find him. I couldn't, I didn't know what was going on. He wasn't, he wasn't saying something was wrong, but he was acting strange. And I would ask him, like, are you okay? You know, what's going on with you? And didn't she just say she couldn't find him? Lord have mercy. He wouldn't really, he wouldn't really tell me. So you just sit on the phone and he just sit there. <laughs> Now she don't know any wait ain't oakland like the hood what about the rich and wealthy wealthy people that she um only associate with i thought she was so wealthy why should be why would she be associating with somebody in oakland he just left he didn't come see me he didn't call he didn't nothing he just left for utah and i was like when he, when he told me, I was like, you where? Because his mother lives here in Oakland and she um, is... I just want to know how the conversation went for her to get him to make the video in the first damn place. What did she do? Call and say, um, Michael, well, you know, they're seeing all this good stuff about me. You think you could do a video saying, you know, all these positive things about me? <laughs> you know because i really do care what they think about me you know oh my god <laughs> so he usually takes care of her so i'm thinking you live where he had left me behind his mother behind his bitch no 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 just because he left do not mean he left his mama you are a technically a stranger you might be uh uh y'all might be friends but y'all don't fucking know each other that well talking about two two maybe three years no he left you not his mama he's his mama gave him birth bitch 
family behind and moved to Utah. So I'm like, what? why are you in Utah? Why are you in Utah? He says to me <laughs> that basically the entire time I've known him, that he's been in a relationship with another woman who lives in Utah and she was having, she ended up with cancer and he went to Utah to take care of her. Sure. I, you know, she's got such a vivid imagination. Oh my God. Who knows what the hell to believe? <laughs> I was like, what? Now, mind you. No, I think that's the lie laugh, y'all. <laughs> That's the lie laugh. I had no idea Michael had a girlfriend. When I first met Michael, he and I started talking. I didn't know that he had a wife. Because he has a wife. Not and his wife and his girlfriend aren't the same people. Well damn, bitch, how how much education did you take to figure that shit out? A wife and a and a girlfriend ain't the same person. The fuck? <laughs> His wife he was supposed to be separated from for like six years. Right? So did you or did you not know about the wife? Now all of a sudden the wife him and the wife were separated for six years and you just now finding that out? Girl boo. And he accidentally told me about this wife one day when we just happened to be talking and he said that them two met up to clean out their storage unit. So the whole time we were like in this friendship, meaning the whole time I was pregnant, my son's first year of birth, right, my son's first year after birth, all this time, I'm thinking Michael is like this single guy who's my friend. And eventually when we started getting closer, like we were about to start dating. We're dating, like slick dating. And Hold the phone. How, what does that mean, slick dating? What the fuck does that even mean? And the minute you found out he had a wife, friend or uh, friend or whatever y'all was doing, bitch. Why the fuck wouldn't you, I mean, why wouldn't you be pissed? I'd be like... You mean to tell me we've been friends all this time? You never that's a betrayal. That's a that that goes to show that if this is true, that he is a deceiver. Girl, I swear for God, like yo like girl, whoever follows you, they just need they need to chow. I just don't, un girl. I find out that this nigga <laughs> has a girlfriend in Utah, and he done left without saying shit and moved to Utah. My son's godfather, somebody, somebody who is like, who has always been extremely kind to me, good to me. I mean, good to me. You got to understand, oh, good to me. Just. Good sir, like priest. Bitch, you have no judge of character. You are a psychotic as mentally challenged grown ass woman, bitch. Didn't say goodbye. Didn't see my son. Just left and it's still in Utah and it's been months. He's still there. Never left. Never left. Valley. He is a narcissist. <laughs> when did y'all start slick dating then? Slick dating, whatever the fuck that means. And you got your nerve calling somebody a damn narcissist. Let me read this comment. Jess Moore who are, what, um, says, Tansa Ray must have an invisible sign that only men can see that says, I'm desperate and stupid. I mean, I ain't never known a woman to be in so many situationships. You can't even call these failed relationships because honestly, they never made it to the point of being a relationship. Exactly. <laughs> Leo narcissist. My, my thing is, my thing is this with Michael. He used to hate priests. He used to so what? Wait a minute. So were they dating or not? 
She said they were dating, but you found out the man was lying about a wife. So when the hell was you dating? Before you found out about the wife or after? Because initially y'all was just friends. Then, you know, on down, way further down the line, you find out he had a wife. Then you find out he had a girlfriend, but y'all were slick dating. See how this shit <laughs> cannot i cannot i don't know what's crazier me for listening to this shit and trying to make sense of it or her ass <laughs> somebody get me a drink where is the bartender bartender the priest didn't really tell me the truth about how he felt about sidonia everybody knows the story of me priest and sidonia Sidonia and Priest made, a believe, made me believe that they were separated and they wasn't feeling each other and likely fucking each other the entire time. Two people got together and made you believe. No, bitch, you chose to believe what you wanted to believe because the minute you found out that he was coming from her house to 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 living in the damn, um, to his grandma's house and never had an apartment in between that bitch is the point where you should have made the decision to go your own way but no not you not miss life coach slash relationship slash never had a successful relationship <laughs> priest was with me and they ended up didn't even end up getting divorced until after my son maybe a year after my son was born after my son michael <laughs> could not stand priest he hated she wants somebody to hate Priest just as much as she do so bad. <laughs> I would, I'm hoping that this man didn't lose sleep over no damn Priest, child. I mean, you know, I understand. Like, I, I've i been in a place where, you know, I've had dudes that wanted to, you know, go confront somebody on my behalf. But shit, they hate, you know, they like, oh my God, they just, they hated him so much. Like, I would never say that. Like that. But shit, my son father was, was I mean, my son father was going to go step to my daughter father. Like, you know, what's the problem? But I'm like, no, stay, this not your business. You know, let it go. You know, my cousin. He, I mean, my guy brother, he wanted to go shoot somebody for me. Like, bitch, you talking about hate? I got niggas that kill <laughs> that want to go shoot. The fuck is you talking about? <laughs> but he was guilty of doing the very thing that Priest did. Now, mind you, I was friends with Michael for two years before I even considered trying to date him. All right? So the whole, take your time when you're dating, because if you move too fast. Who's she trying to mock? Bitch, that's not nobody fault. Oh, they made a video of my aunt's memorial. Let me just text my sister real quick. Sorry, y'all. Uh... I wonder if she went. It's going to be the demise of your situation. I took my time. Never had sex with Michael. Nothing. She act like somebody said something wrong about taking your time. Bitch. You could take your time and still end up with a fucking serial killer. Love you too, sissy. But um, still, you look better taking your time than, doing, than getting pregnant. Off the off the rip, bitch. Shit, you act like somebody said something wrong. Nothing. <laughs> and this nigga. Cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> now I, smoke. I was like, oh my god. Now what made me think about Michael? Not just because of the comment somebody left last night. I gave Michael access to my Facebook page. Um, meaning access, like, create, you know how you can have people who are administrators of, like, your Facebook page to where if something happens to you, if you pass away, the people that are in your life that are attached to this page can control your Facebook page. Now, 
<laughs> Yo, was this before she fake committed suicide? Because that sounds awfully suspicious. As though she was already planning some shit. It sounds real suspicious because she went ahead and blamed people or whatever. Somehow blamed others for getting hacking her account or some shit. You know, it's so long ago. Don't nobody give a shit. Don't nobody care. But I'm just saying. This sounds real fishy right now. But to those of you that um are listening for the first time and don't know the rat, like, you know, the pit, Viper Pit does. Here you go. So three days ago, right, I'm chilling and I get an alert. And it said... Not a alert. It's an alert, bitch. A-N, an alert. I could be a grammar police when I want to. <laughs> has deleted your Facebook page. She is scheduled to delete your... your, your the Facebook page is scheduled to delete in 14 days. I'm like, Michael, I haven't heard from Michael since the nigga told me he moved to Utah. Because once he told me he moved to Utah to be with some chick that he had been with the whole time that he never told me about, I stopped talking to him. Because when you've been friends with somebody, listen, I was his friend two years. Two years, we've just been friends, and that that's it. And just started to really try to date. Uh-uh. Okay, go ahead. And the nigga just suddenly stops calling and shit and disappears and then calls me after I've been calling, checking up on him, trying to see what's wrong, thinking he dead or something. He finally resurfaces and tells me he done moved to Utah to take care of his girlfriend. I can't get over the fact that she's trying to blame people for telling her, for, for suggesting that she take her time with the next time she decides to get into a relationship. Girl, you can't. <laughs> his friend for years on top of years. Been his girlfriend for years on top of years on top of years. <laughs> he didn't tell me about. And he moved to Utah to be where because she got cancer. Oh, my God. Like, oh. Child. <laughs> it's like, what? So when I was upset, I told him to stay out of my life. I asked him, I was like, what about your family? What about your mother? You take care of your mom. What about justice? What about what about me? Like, you just gonna leave like that? She tells him to stay out of her life. And then she questioning him about her, Justy. Never mind that he told you he had a wife that he never told you about before. Bitch, don't worry about his mama. He, his mama gonna be taken care of. I, I would imagine the fuck you worried about her for. And not say nothing? Not even see me? Not even let me know, like, so I'm so ready, I'm moving to Utah? I was like, Ugh. so I stopped talking to him. And then the other day, I get this message that he was trying to delete my Facebook page because I had made him an administrator for my page. And I forgot I had made him an administrator. I didn't. I would have never. Rem- I, I would have never remembered that if he had not done it. And so, excuse me. I had to take him off as administrator and cancel the deletion of my Facebook page. And of course, you guys know I do Facebook Watch. So if he had deleted my page, he'd have del- deleted my Facebook Watch channel. And it just, it would have been a bad business move for me, and I would have had to start over with my Facebook page, and that would have made me mad, because I put a lot of work into my Facebook page. You know, um, all of my social media profiles are all about business. You know, I, I don't I don't have any personal social media. It all has something to do. I just want to know why you would make someone, not your daughter, but some, okay, I say random. But, okay, some man that, you know, you supposedly developed a friendship, relationship with, friendship. Why would you make him head of your Facebook page as if, you know, you just had a child? 
you why are you anticipating something happening to you and, and, and didn't she mention death or some shit why are you anticipating at 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 30 some years old just having a baby that something's gonna happen to you that you need somebody to be over your facebook page I mean, and who gives a fuck about a Facebook page? The only thing I'm concerned about is my insurance policy and my kids being on my insurance policy. Other than that, no Instagram, no YouTube, no Facebook. Oh, shit, I bit my tongue. Ah, oh, the ghost of Sansa Damn it. <laughs> you know, what I do professionally, you know, being a TV personality, being oh a social God. media personality, being an influencer, it's all professional to me, it's all business to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to keep stop it. I just want to hear her say she the, mo <laughs> the most requested black life coach, like Umar, say he the most requested black scholar. <laughs> it just sounds so funny to hear her say that. And I said this before, I said this, been in my life when when things go wrong in our situation or I get to a point where I don't want to deal with them anymore because I here's the thing before I get to that a lot of men that I have dated have wanted me to like be with them through their bullshit they want to sleep with other women but they want me to stay there and watch them do it they want didn't the fuck she say she was polyamorous? What are we talking about here? I want me to be the type of woman that loves them so much that I'll stick with them through anything, and that includes them being with other men, right? This is what men have wanted from me, and I noticed this a long time ago. It's men, men have never, no man I've ever been with has been so supportive as far as my career goes to where they'll help me with it. You know, they've been more like, oh, I don't want you to do this. I don't want you. You know what, bitch? Because that's not the natural order of things. A woman is a help me, and you help each other once you establish some kind of long-term relationship, possibly um, leading up to marriage, bitch. What the fuck are they going to get out of helping you? I mean, you help yourself. And you find people that want to help you. You know, the guy that you're dating should have his, more than likely, has his own shit going on. What the fuck are they helping you with anyway? You ain't got shit going on, bitch. To do that, you know, I want you to, well, most men have wanted me to sit home and be housewife. All they wanted me to do was be pretty, chill, sleep with them, cook, clean, that's it. And so I've never have been a... Wait a minute, don't forget you pay mortgages too, bitch. So they want you to cook clean, pay mortgages, sit there and watch them have sex with another um another man downstairs. Was it another man you said or another girl? Child, I don't fucking remember. I guess it was another girl. She he brought in the house listening to R. Kelly. Yeah, that's what it was. A relationship with someone who had been like so supportive where they cheered me on. And, and that's a problem for me. Like, I never required that, you know. I just noticed that they didn't do it after we've been together for a while. So, like I said in my last video, when, when I was talking... Girl, what's a while to you? Six months? Girl. Talking about how I ended up being homeless and in, in a hotel, it was because I was with Priest, and Priest wasn't very supportive of me financially, right? Um, and business-wise, uh, he wasn't supportive of my YouTube channel, um, you know, and so, <sighs> what I feel- Bitch, that shouldn't have made you or broke you. You was already you before you fucking met Priest. So your channel, with or without him, should continue just fine. I mean, it's continuing, but your shit ain't went nowhere. It's still the same 40 plus thousand subscribers. Same old dry ass fucking content. <laughs> I feel like with men is when things don't go right with us, and I yo, I'm just laughing because she swears she was gonna be like the fucking um the Beverly Halls, I think that's what they call, and any of these other um YouTube couples. Child, 
That was her whole thing. She just, oh my God. That would have made her entire life. Decide to cut them off altogether. Because <laughs> see, it's a difference between you going through something with somebody and you still sitting there arguing back and forth with them trying to work it out. I'm not the try to work it out type of person. I have boundaries and standards. So you didn't beg, priest. <laughs> You ain't never beg, beg the nigga to come to, to stay with you or come back to you, bitch. I just don't believe that shit. It's a limitation. So if there's something that you do that cross the line, that's it. I, and usually when I'm dating a man, I tell him what it is so they know what it is. You know, so when I find out that that line is crossed, I don't deal with them at all. And so when I get to a point where I'm not dealing with them at all, what they try to do after that is attack my business. They attack my social media presence. They go out and try to depict me as like this mean person or this person that did something to them when the reason why we're not dealing with each other is something that they chose, something that they did. And then my response was, I don't want to deal with you at all. You know, so what I feel like with Michael, with him sitting here trying to delete my Facebook, because he thought, I guess he thought he was going to delete it. And YouTube wasn't going to, I mean, uh, Facebook wasn't going to contact me or give me 14 days to change my mind. I'm, I'm believing that Michael was just trying to ruin something for me. Again, oh my God. You're dealing with somebody two years that is a random person. You give him access to a Facebook account and then wonder why you choose the way that you do girl and this is what y'all sit up here and listen to okay so this person preserve big cat says more in this diatribe than any that came before i'm beginning to see ray has missed some serious connections with how relationships work it's like if you're listening to a 70 year old girl telling you her problems about her past bfs now I'm going to be very leery on the men I meet. Now, Ray, for real? You actually made a moderator you know for less than two years, the godfather of your only son. No one man in your family could have met that qualification. You gave it to a person you met online because he bought you. <laughs> he bought you pizza on the weekends. This alone shows you make poor decisions in your judgment. So many things I can pick apart on this. She brought all her life's experiences upon herself. Then, same person, second comment. She's all over the place. And each and every subject she brings up shows her genuine disconnect, dysfunction with relationships. Totally misses the cues and signs of others because she does not know how to put herself in someone else's skin. Just a sloppy mess of immense proportions. <laughs> Who has as many problems with their exes? Not just one, but half a dozen or so. And then, and this is just me saying, then she tries to pretend like, oh, I'm I'm friends with all my exes. <laughs> On her saying her mom tried to delete her Facebook page, I bet he tried to quit the page, and that was the notification Ray got. She just making up that he's trying to sabotage her failed ventures. He probably finally realized what a leech does after so many months of training. <laughs> <laughs> Every man said, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> and then this person, the same person says, she's been on my radar for years, at least eight. I try to keep out of the comments, just taking it all as fun and entertainment. But then she started doxing others in the lies. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the work. Uh -huh. All right, let's see to get my attention, to get a response out of me. And it's sad that men have done that to me and I've noticed that pattern with guys. And that's the, the fact that I noticed that now, if I do decide to start dating somebody on a serious tip, one of the things that I'm definitely going to require from these men is number one, you have to be supportive in, in regards to my career, regardless to what it is that I'm doing. If you are not supportive of my career and you disapprove, you and I don't need to be dating. Okay, don't sit here and pretend like you are supportive. Well, really, you're not. Okay, don't do that. All right, that's number one. Number two, 
<laughs> supportive don't mean dragging somebody onto your fucking um into your fucking business slash YouTube channel um trying to make them um participate in something that they really have no understanding of and are not interested in bitch um <clears throat> so when you talk about uh support you somebody can support you from a distance they don't have to partake in your bullshit they can support you from a fire over there like okay go ahead boo do you i support you doing you but I don't have to be a part of it. Oh, shit. I did not mean to do this. Hold on, y'all. Yeah. Um. Oh, I just stopped the video for a few seconds. Um, I just watched the memorial. My aunt passed away last week. Um, got me feeling a little kind of way. I was looking at a bunch of... The old pictures of my dad, he's gone. All the sisters and brothers are gone except for my auntie, who is the youngest of the, the clan of the kids. So, but anyway, back to the rap. That I needed a man that understands the concept of unity, right? To where if I'm not in his presence and he hears someone speaking negatively about me, we're one unit. So if they disrespect me to him, they disrespect him. And this is what priest didn't understand. Um, one unit comes with an engagement or marriage. Um, hello. <laughs> Not some half ass thrown together. Oh, oops, you got me pregnant. Um, okay, now we gotta find a place to live in between sleeping in a car. Girl. <laughs> people were coming to him on social media speaking negatively to him about me he didn't defend me like he should have like anybody saw me like you you guys saw me when i was dating priests and people would say negative things to me about him and i would defend him now i will say he ain't shit for doing what he did allowing them to you know talk say what they were saying to him but carry on right that's he didn't do that for me he didn't do that for me so I just feel like when the, Michael and Priest are two men that have taught me a lot about what it is I actually need in a relationship. And what I notice about being around people who depict themselves as perfection, I can see the difference between the facade now and something real. Because now that I look back at Michael, he was just too perfect. He was just too good. You know what I mean? Like, he was too good to be true. You know, I mean, even my family relied on Mike. You know what I mean? To be there for us. So, he, that's how good he had. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> even her family relied on Michael. What? What do you mean? had me in he had me thinking he was genuinely my friend and then excuse me no friend of mine that oh, excuse me what's going on man i must be hungry no no friend of mine would just disappear on me and my son like that especially if they're my son's godfather especially if they're taking care of me financially it's you know my laptop's saying i need to delete some space so i may have to make this in two parts so if it stops abruptly that's why uh all right Especially if they tell me that they're my friend. They're not just going to up and move to another state and just not say anything. And that's just not it. They're not going to have a girlfriend or somebody that they're in love with and not tell me that. The part of being friendship, friends, all right, is you being comfortable enough, even if you're dating someone, we got such a cool friendship that if you are interested in somebody else, you just flat out say that to them. Just flat out. You don't have to get no lesson on friendship, bitch. We know that shit. <laughs> Is you the one that want to run around trusting random people off of YouTube and getting all your friends and, and, and contacts off of YouTube, bitch? Say that to me, because I'm your friend. You should be able to confide in me about anything. 
that's how I feel about, you know, if, if I'm dating a guy, I've always put friendship first. And so when, when things don't work out or he treats me as if... I always put friendship first. You got pregnant within three months of 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 a meeting priest where was the friendship if we haven't built some type of friendship that's what hurts when when i'm not when, when things go wrong inside of these relationships because in each relationship that i've ever been in i've been their friend first and and that's what it was with me and priest i felt like i was his friend first you know um if he felt anything or or if he wasn't feeling me like that that's fine. Just say that and I move on with my life. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be all up in your face and try to get you to be with me and all of this stuff. No, nah, just tell me what's up so I can find somebody that genuinely wants me. Bitch, you was fawning all over him within the first couple of months. Oh my god, this is it, this is it. Oh my god, oh my god. Like I he's the man I've ever I've been looking for. He's so perfect, blah blah blah. Girl, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere. I mean, I was dealing with somebody too that I was I was feeling, you know, the guy that was living out of town or whatever, and I was kind of feeling him, but I'm not gonna be. Oh my God, he's the one. He's the one. The fuck out of here. And that's another reason why I'm kind of upset that Priest and I have a baby together because I feel like I could have had a baby by somebody who I might confide in a friend. Like, yo, I really like this nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm hoping that he is something could transpire out of this that that will you know end up being long term but i'm not gonna be like shouting it out to the mountaintop to the world and to all my friends and family i might confide in one person i'm not that's like you know that's like me telling all my friends and family and then the shit don't work out after i've only known him for three months and that's exactly what the fuck happened bitch I'm not telling nobody shit until, you know, maybe six, ten months down the line or longer. Do you really care for me? Not you. Not you, asshole. And so anyway, <laughs> with Michael, it kind of, it's just like, uh, a man I ain't even had sex with, a man that I wasn't even uh, in a committed relationship yet with yet, still ended up being the man that did the very thing that Priest did. So so this is another reason why when you get out of one relationship, you really got to take the time to be by yourself and discover who you are and, and what you are. How do you think of yourself? You know, what, what, what is it that you genuinely need? Who are you? Because a lot of times people don't really know what they need. They don't even know what they're attracting. I feel like I attracted Michael right after I got out of a relationship with Priest. And Michael and Priest are derivatives of each other. Michael was just a guy that I didn't take the next step with yet. But he was just as guilty and just as bad as Priest. But but Michael always... I ain't never... Just like the person in the comment section. I ain't never seen nobody attract... The same kind of person over and over and over again. Girl. girl. Depicted himself as the superhero and Priest as the villain. When really they both was villains. And this is what I attracted. Another person that was going to lie to me. And I'm telling you, it, it sideswiped me. Just like what, what Priest did what he did. It's that's the same, as the saying goes, you attract what you are and what you believe. Sideswipe me. I had no idea. I had no idea. I was like, literally, that's the type of person you are? Get the fuck out of here. Because you never, I mean, I just never, I never thought in a million years that my spidey senses would be so off that I could meet not one, but two men who could be hiding their love for another woman from me with our friendship being the way that it was. You know what I mean? And it, it just made me understand that men are so good at hiding shit. They're so good at lying and manipulating that even if you're just friends with them, they could have you so wrapped around their finger that you have no idea what they're doing. And that shit is dangerous. And men only see what they... No, bitch, you're dangerous because... Every man you choose is something, you know, 
I mean, it's not even that there's nothing wrong with them. You just don't know how to choose, period. They want. They only see. They only have tunnel vision. They only see what they want at the end of the at the end of the tunnel. So whoever they hurt in the meanwhile, whoever they, um, you know, lie to or manipulate. I shouldn't say she don't know how to choose. Hell, I'm single now. I'm a dancer. But um, again, like I said, you know. I'm the type of person that's going to observe you and 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 watch how you move. Okay. She leading with them big old titties. That's what he thought he was gonna get. Along the way, <laughs> they don't even think about that shit until after the fact, until after it's too late. And I understand that about men now. And so my standards are now even more higher than they were uh after I dated priests. Now, my standards was high when I dated priests. You oh, know, they, Father they were God. High. And I was giving this dude the benefit of the doubt because he couldn't meet my standard. Mm, and mm, and, it, mm, and it, mm. it honestly says a lot about what I genuinely thought about him because I must have genuinely thought low of him from the very beginning if I felt like in order for him to, to reach my status or be able to uh, be around me, I had to lower my standards. So. That makes no sense. I don't even know what the fuck she just said, but I know it don't make no sense. <laughs> and I'm not even about to go back and listen to it again. I can't take it. <laughs> so he can achieve or so he can accomplish. Uh, you know, being the man that I needed. Okay, for all the new folks and the folks in the back. So she lowered her standards for a man that she found out the day after she met him off of Plenty of Fish. Not judging Plenty of Fish, but the day after she met him, she says, um, he tells her that he, 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 um, has a wife that, um, I guess that they're going through a separation, even though he still lives in the home with her. He doesn't have his own place. He doesn't have his own car and he makes $400 a week. Okay. Um, he was never the man that I needed. If you got to put it like this, ladies, if you got to lower your standards in order for the man that you were interested in to. And this is the man she tried to throw on YouTube and get up y'all lovey dovey with and um, um, try to portray this happy old relationship. And oh, we went to D.C. and we went here and we went there. Girl, boo actually be the man of your dreams then he's not the man of your dreams he's not good for you and i feel like with priest i kind of knew he was it was me dating down even though he had a lot of good qualities he was missing so much and instead of me holding up my standard he had a lot of good qualities but his breath stank he had gur. You said he had herpes on his lips. He went to the Dominican and slept with a bunch of random women. Um, he made four hundred dollars a week. He made four hundred. <laughs> I cannot. I lowered my standard and gave him the benefit of the doubt. It ended up with a guy that wasn't really up to par to begin with, because no, you didn't lower shit. Y'all belong together. Trust and believe. Y'all belong together today. Because y'all both ain't shit. <laughs> of course he wasn't going to be up to par to begin with because I lowered the standard. So with Michael, right, my standards were, was higher with Michael. Oh, and I, it, it kind of burns me. How your standards higher with Michael when you was just friends with Michael? You said y'all, 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 what was the word she said? Low-key dated? I don't even know what the fuck that means. Up on the inside that he kind of used my son. To, to get closer to me. Um, and then... After all that hemming and high and spitting and crying and carrying on, you know what I'm saying, she goes right back and in, in, in falls into the arms of somebody who keeps a big old secret from her again. And she allows this man to be her child's godfather. Some random fucking stranger off of YouTube. Okay. Makes sense to me. When he saw that he could, <laughs> I, I guess he could have the opportunity to, to save someone, 
because he he might have like a hero save complex. He ran straight to Utah um, to be with a woman and take care of a woman who had cancer. Now, to me, that's admirable to take care of somebody who is ill. But I just feel like when I was sick, right? Oh, you guys Lord. Remember, when I was pregnant with my son and I was Jesus. so sick, I, and I couldn't really do too much of anything. I was left by myself. And so this is another reason why I kind of was like upset with Michael. This is like, I don't know if, know if I want to use the word upset. Maybe I was jealous, right? Because when I was sick, you know, no one came to my rescue. He ain't got shit um, to do with as that. As my man goes. Like people from the internet gave me donations. She jealous of a woman she don't know and a man that she barely know going to take care of a woman that she don't know. <laughs> oh my God. But to be there for me, to take care of me, to make sure that I ate, you know, to make sure that um, I was feeling well, just to just to watch over me. No one was there. And that person was supposed to be priest and he wasn't there. Um, and speaking of soulmates, Valen, you're talking about soulmates. You said, I've learned that they're soulmates. Soulmates teaches us lessons what we want, don't we really are, and heal childhood issues we didn't realize was there. That's very true. Um, I, I still feel like, um, to some degree, I, I had some type of soul tie. Like, I always talk about my soul tie with priests. I do feel like I had a soul tie with him. I called him my spiritual woman. I had a soul tie with, with Michael. But sometimes these people that you have these soul ties with, it's it's temporary, you know. Um, but I do I do feel like maybe I was a little jealous because I felt like Michael ran to this woman when he found out she was sick, and I didn't have anybody there as kind as I am to the. First of all, bitch, you don't know how long he knew the woman in Utah in the first damn place. Did you fucking ask? You don't know. Men that I date, I didn't have anybody there as kind as I was to priests. He wasn't there, you know, and, and I could see if I was like, I, you know, I really wish I would have. Okay. So I took psych psychology in, um, in school, some, some psychology classes in college. And I just wish I would have stuck with that shit because I want to know like this person, this whole personality disorder she got going on. Like, what makes her, you know, feel like, how, you know, it's so weird that people say they give themselves so much praise. I was so kind. I'm so beautiful. I know it's narcissistic and everything, but I wish I could have delved. I'm going to try, I might delve into that and, and study that a bit more because this is very intriguing to me. A bad person to these women, to these men? You know, if I was a bad woman to these men, then it would make sense. Then I, then it would be like, oh, that's why they didn't, they, they didn't come to you, or that's why they treated you the way that they treated you. It would make sense to me, oh but because I was so good to these guys, mm -hmm. it, it, that's what bothers me. I was so nice to them, and, and with Michael, I was more uh, precautious because I just got out of a relationship with Priest, and when I met Michael, I was still pregnant, and then I had to deal with my first year with Justice. So once Justice got a little older, and I felt like it, it was time for Justice and Michael to you know, start building a relationship is right when he moved to Utah and was with this other woman. And it made me feel, I was just so upset with him. I cried. I was so upset with him and I just never talked to him again. I haven't talked to him since. And then to, for me to get onto Facebook, get that alert from Facebook that he tried to delete my Facebook page. It's just like, <sighs> what are you doing? You know, you trying to ruin, you know, my professional life just kind of like how priest tried to do because priest priest's biggest thing on social media was like let's come together and try to get her facebook page i mean her all right y'all i'm gonna end this one this is part one feel free to like share subscribe thanks for tuning in um you ain't gotta go home but you got to get the hell up out of here all right y'all i'll see you in the next one